What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today behind me we have my 2023 Tesla Model Y and we're gonna be doing a do-it-yourself, easy application ceramic coating for under $100. So like I said, this is my 2023 Tesla Model Y. You might be noticing that this is not exactly a factory color. This is Steck Dino Prism paint protection film. It's kind of a clear with an extra metallic in it on top of factory Tesla blue paint. So that's what gives it this kind of purple blue flip. Um, this film is relatively hydrophobic, but I do want to ceramic coat it just to make it easier to clean. I live in an apartment complex, so I rely on do-it-yourself car washes or touchless car washes. Uh, so I want to make it as easy to keep clean as possible, and doing a ceramic coating certainly helps enable that. So we're going to go back to the trunk here. Uh, I'm going to show you the products we're going to be using, and then we're going to actually apply it to the car, and we're going to take it panel by panel and kind of the steps you need to follow to do it well. And again, this is not a professional installation. I'm not a detailing expert, but I do know enough to be dangerous, and I do know that I like to keep my cars clean uh, and kind of as easy as possible with as little upkeep as possible. And I just have a touchless car wash subscription for Circle K specifically, but depending on what's available in your region, um, there may be other options. I don't recommend touch car washes because uh, those will just introduce so many micro scratches into your paint. Additionally, if your car is not covered in paint protection film like mine and it's not brand new, or even if it is brand new, you're most likely going to want to do a uh, what's called a paint correction on your car before you do a ceramic coating because otherwise you're going to be somewhat trapping the imperfections of your paint rather than um, coating onto a nice, fresh and clean and perfectly glossy surface. Uh, because even on a brand new car, you can actually have micro scratches um, from the dealership not prepping it properly or just from taking it through car washes, whatever the case might be. Uh, and a paint correction is essentially doing a polish and compound and things like that. Uh, generally, you'll want to take it to a professional for that unless you happen to have those skills, which many of you may have, or if you want to do it yourself and learn. But I personally would not recommend learning how to do paint corrections on a new car. There's a good chance you could mess it up, potentially burn through the clear coat, things like that. So leave that to the professionals, have them ceramic coat it and do the paint correction. But if you have a car in pretty good shape, or if you're comfortable doing that yourself, or if you have a car covered in paint protection film or wrap, whatever, uh, then you can follow this video. And all the products that I'm gonna be showing, they are gonna be linked down in the description below. And buying it through those links on Amazon does help out the channel. So certainly would appreciate if you find this video helpful uh, and you choose to go ahead with doing this yourself that you purchase it through those links. So let me show you the products we're gonna be using uh, and we'll get to it. So I've got some of the products set up back here. So we're gonna be starting with surface prep from Griot. This is where we're going to be using to take off any uh, film or anything that's on the car, whether that's from automatic touch car washes, uh, spray detail, or anything like that. Just nice and clean on the surface before we apply this Adams Polishes Graphene Ceramic Spray Coating. And we're gonna be applying this by spraying it onto uh, the ultra premium microfiber applicator from Adams Polishes. And then to maintain the car, we're gonna be using Adams Graphene Detail Spray. So this is what I'll use with a microfiber after uh, I get a touchless car wash in the future. Uh, to kind of refresh the coating as well as just kind of keep it nice and hydrophobic. Um, we also have some gloves. I linked some down below. These ones are just from Walmart. You can get them wherever. Uh, I'm also linking a kit that includes the spray coating, these microfiber applicators, and two of these Adams Polishes towels. But I also have some Costco uh, microfiber towels because Costco's microfiber towels are just a hell of a deal. Uh, I believe it's $15.99 or $16.99 for a 36 pack of these microfiber towels. I know a lot of detail tint wrap shops use these because they're just such a great deal. Um, I sometimes actually use them as one time use, which is maybe not the best, but that way you're sure that you always have a clean cloth. But without further ado, we're gonna get started. So we're gonna start on the hood and we're first going to be using the surface prep cleaner, giving it a nice um, clean, layer of paint or not paint in this case paint protection film take off any film that's on the surface then we're going to be spraying the coating onto this microfiber and i'll show you how to apply it we'll let it sit for one to two minutes and then we're going to just kind of polish it off with a microfiber cloth and just that's basically it um you can actually repeat it multiple times as well so let's get to it so like i said we're going to be doing this panel by panel we're going to be starting with the hood so we've got the griot's uh, surface prep cleanser we're going to spray some here 
if it wants to spray. New bottle problems. Uh, you may want to spray this under a cloth, but this works too. And then we're just going to clean the entire hood uh, nice and thoroughly. So here you can see the amount of dirt that came off there, uh, even on paint that appeared to be pretty clean. Um, but I last washed my car yesterday, so this is just some dirt that accumulated on it. Uh, and I'm going to actually do a second pass now that I've taken off kind of the initial dirt here. And now that we have a nice and clean surface, I've got the actual ceramic coating and I have the applicator. So we're going to just spray it onto the applicator and then we're going to start with uh, kind of doing a path around the surface and then doing some crosshatch patterns on the panel. Uh, I cleaned the hood and the bumper, but we're going to start with just the hood and then we're just going to kind of work our way back. And what's nice about this coating is that it works on all the different surfaces. So you can use this on paint, uh, paint protection film, glass, plastic, trim, whatever, basically. This is a pretty uh, easy application coating, I would call it. Uh, because you can kind of just put it on everything and it'll just make it hydrophobic, kind of protect it a bit. There are probably film, or not films, uh, coatings out there that are better in a lot of ways, but are likely harder to install, maybe not as uh, DIY friendly, and probably more expensive as well. Main reason I'm doing this is for kind of the hydrophobicity, if that's a word, uh, and just making the car easier to clean and easier to get bugs off, uh, easier to dry after a touchless car wash. Uh, and just easier to have all the water just sheet right off from the blowers on the touchless car wash rather than having to wipe it off or leaving water spots, things like that. So I sprayed some of the coating onto the applicator here. So we're just gonna start back here. You can kinda see where I'm applying it. And I like to just kinda trace the area that I'm working just to make sure I at least get all the edges. And then we're gonna do the crosshatch pattern. And see, I'm just working uh, back and forth a little bit to make sure I get all the different areas. And you can see why this is so important to make sure that the paint is clean first, because otherwise you'll end up with uh, dragging the dirt across the surface. And again, we're going to let this sit for about one to two minutes after we're done doing this, and then we'll buff it off. All right, you can maybe slightly tell that I've applied the coating across the entire panel. We're gonna let this sit for about one to two minutes. I'm probably gonna actually do the bumper in the meantime, and then we'll polish that off uh, just with a fresh, clean microfiber, and then we're just gonna keep working our way back on all the panels. Well, it's time to polish it off. You can already see a little bit where I've done that. So we're basically just wiping it off with this fresh microfiber. Kind of turning it over here as needed. Obviously, it's very important that this is a clean microfiber or you're just going to be uh, swirling your paint like crazy by doing this. So I'm going to get the whole panel here and then I'll show you. And then, of course, we're just going to keep going around. Uh, we'll do the whole car and I'll show you the result at the end. But on the bumper and kind of these leading edge surfaces, probably on the bottom of the doors too, I'm actually going to do multiple coatings. So to, the way you do that is that you do it once um, and then you come back around after you've already wiped it off and everything and you can actually layer multiple l layers of the ceramic coating makes it even more hydrophobic um, makes it a little bit stronger Adam says you can do up to three layers of it before it becomes not really worth it anymore Well, here we have it, my freshly coated car. I'll give you a full walk around in just a moment, but I've got a microfiber towel here. I don't actually know how absorbent it's gonna be at this point, um, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a water pour test just so you can see how hydrophobic it is. So you can see how that sheets just right off there. Just like that. It just falls off the car. And basically that's what it's gonna be like when you need to wash your car. You just wipe it off. This microfiber is uh, not the most effective because I was using it to wipe it off at the end. So it has a bit of the coating on it. But let me give you a full walk around now that I've kind of demonstrated what it's like. So it's been about an hour and a half since I started doing this. So relatively quick. I was also kind of taking my time. I also did the wheels. I also did the mud flaps. I did a second coating on the hood and the bumper. So I didn't do kind of the base minimum installation. I also had some lessons learned along the way, which we'll get to in just a minute. But Let's do a full walk around so you can see it. So here we have it. You'll notice it's very shiny. There's also some uh, condensation on the front window and the side window there. 
that's just because I have the AC cranked because it is 95 degrees outside. So definitely uh, not the ideal conditions for doing this, but I wanted to get it done sooner rather than later. You can just see how that reflection follows me. There are a few streaks here and there that I'll notice over time and just kind of wipe off. Uh, and one of the things that I learned as I was doing this application is that uh, you actually want to let it sit shorter when it's warmer temperatures because it kind of dwells or, um, I don't know, it flashes over, I guess is probably the best term there. Uh, no pun intended with my last name. But that way the, the uh, particles of the coating itself actually kind of settle onto the vehicle paint or in this case paint protection film. Uh, and if you let it sit too long in these warm temperatures, it kind of bakes on and it gets a lot harder to polish off. But I learned as I kind of went, rather than letting it sit like the two, three minutes or one to two minutes that it recommends, I was actually doing it within like 30 seconds to a minute, just given the temperatures here. If you're doing it in cooler weather or whatever, you can probably let it sit slightly longer, but I'd say do a test panel and kind of learn how it reacts as you're doing it. Uh, and then kind of adjust accordingly before you kind of dive fully into it because I definitely learned that pretty quick and the hood is a big panel to learn on so I'd say maybe start with a fender or something uh, a little bit smaller panel easier to uh, learn with and I guess if you mess up it's easier to uh, kind of undo and restart but I actually have quite a bit of the uh, coating left I have almost three quarters of the bottle I'd say maybe two thirds so I could probably do this another two three times or additional vehicles if I had them but I would say I plan on this lasting probably six to 12 months given how much I drive uh, and how many touchless car washes I use and kind of the chemicals that are in those and can kind of strip things like this. But I'd say that's still very good. And for under $100 for the entire job, I'm very happy with that. I think it looks really good. The real test will be when I take it through a touchless car wash and it just kind of beads all right off. And that way I can just kind of do a quick walk around and wipe everything right off rather than having to use as much quick detailer. Even though I did buy the graphene quick detailer spray with the intent of using it, I'd rather not have to use as much of it and have it be a quicker process when I do do a touchless car wash. And while we're on the topic of ceramic coatings, even though I didn't make a video about it, I actually ceramic coated the seats. I use ceramic loosely in that case. I mean, it is maybe a ceramic based coating, but I think ceramic coating has become a little bit of a marketing hype Anyway, I used a Gion, um, I forgot the name of it, but I'll link it down below, coating on the white seats uh, just to kind of make them easier to clean. The white seats are already really easy to clean if you just use like a baby wipe uh, or damp microfiber or whatever you have that's handy to just wipe them off. But I did use this coating, just kind of applied them kind of day two as I was also applying that temporary paint protection film that many of you saw and commented about. Thanks for commenting, by the way. I thought it looked terrible and I knew it. I just didn't acknowledge it because I knew I was doing this or I don't, I didn't fully know what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to protect it so that I could do this, uh, the color changing PPF, the stack dyno prism. But anyway, I coated them. Uh, it's holding up really well. I also did the armrest, the door cards, things like that, just to kind of fully protect the interior as well, uh, because I really like my cars to look clean all the time. And some people always say that why am I bothering to protect it so much for the future owners? Uh, it doesn't add resale value, whatever. I don't really care. I do it for me because I like to drive a very nice and clean car. I like to not have swirls. I like to not have rock chips. I like to have a spotless interior. And I do that for me. Um, not all of you are car people like I am, which is quite evident in the EV world. And I totally respect that. Not everyone is into cars like I am, but I personally view my car as a reflection of me to an, at least to some extent. Uh, and I like it to be kind of unique and clean and uh, kind of advanced, if you will. Uh, I don't like to drive the same car as everyone else, which is why I've done the modifications that I've done to the car to make it look unique. But anyway, enough of that tangent. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you're considering doing this to your vehicle, definitely check out the links down below for all the products used. Uh, I'd recommend having probably four or five microfibers on hand. I think I used five. I only used one of the microfiber applicators, but I'd say if you're doing this on paint, I would maybe swap a few times just for sake of uh, making sure that you're not tracing any uh, dirt or anything across your paint, even if even with cleaning it well. I didn't really worry as much with the paint protection film because uh, it's self-healing. You just park it in the sun and then it kind of melts out or like re-levels the paint protection film from swirls. So not a big deal in this case, but with paint, I would definitely be very diligent on swirls and probably swap microfibers even more often. Um, so yeah, probably just get a Costco pack and have them on hand. I also link some Adam's uh, borderless ones 
if you just want to order it all on Amazon or if you don't have a Costco near you. But anyway, again, thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one.